Hi, I'm Pete May, president of Green Biz Group, and delighted to be here with Maxine Burkett, a professor of law at the University of Hawaii. Uh, Maxine, first tell us a little bit about your practice. What do you, what do, you do there? Yeah, I, I'm a professor of law, as you've said, at the University of Hawaii, and I focus on climate change law and policy. And I'm also a global fellow at the Woodrow Wilson um, International Center for Scholars as part of their environmental change and security program. Yeah, interesting. Tell us a little bit about the scope of what you what you cover. Um, yeah. yeah, so climate change law and policy is all uh, uh, levels of the law and policy making around um, addressing climate change, whether it's the reduction of emissions or adaptation to the impacts of climate change or issues that are more on the sort of cutting edge, which are, and generally involve the equity concerns that are relevant to communities that are uh, low income within rich countries as well as uh, communities in the global south that tend to be more vulnerable to the impacts of climate change in spite of, uh, uh, of a sort of, of disproportionately lower input into the causes of climate change. Interesting. So I, I heard you in a session earlier and you had a very striking line. You said um, climate change is not the elephant in the room, but the octopus in the parking lot. Can you explain that one? Yeah, well, so this has been something that um, has been highlighted by colleagues in the environmental law community, environmental law teaching community as well. The idea there is that we have a lot of surprises, climate surprises that are coming to us, things that we haven't seen before, mm. the sort of no analog future. And there are events that are happening now that presage that, that sort of suggest that we're at that point. And in particular, the Miami Herald had a picture of an octopus that was sort of floating in a bit of water in a parking garage and the tagline was sort of it was a king tide not a yeah. storm not a hurricane or anything uh, extreme but a, a, a high high tide and the high high tides now are uh, creating impacts like uh, bringing octop an octopus into a parking garage and that seems to me to be uh, something that we are not giving enough attention to. Yeah. And interestingly enough, it, it could be the hammerhead shark in the intersection here in Mapuna mm. Puna. It could be the Wait, was that a true story? Yes, that, that wow. there have been baby hammerhead oh sharks God. found and fish uh, along the um, the Alawai and the street, uh, you know, sort of fl flooding on, on sunny days, sea urchin in the storm drains in the in northern Florida coast. The, the idea here is that we have a number of instances in which there are surprising uh, unprecedented events that are only going to become more common as we face a, a changing climate. Yeah, as that I'm an open water swimmer, so that's a very, very kind of graphic, visual, uh, striking visual yeah, of those things. Yeah, you don't expect it when you're crossing the street. Yeah, <laughs> another thing I, I picked up on, uh, you mentioned, it was um, kind of this tension between, we talk a lot at, at Verge and Green Biz about uh, the need for resilience. It's certainly a big part of the the clean economy, but you talked about the tension between the resilient and the just. Can you explain that a little bit? Yeah, the idea is just that um, you know when we think about resilience, we're, we're describing a situation where you you are uh, able to rebound after some kind of shock, and usually external. And the resilient response may not always be the the just response, or it may not be the obvious response. In other words, when we think about post-Katrina New Orleans, uh, environmental justice, uh, answering the question of whether or not to rebuild, say, in certain communities, environmental justice or just responses could have justified both rebuilding, because this was mm. a, cen a, you know, a century of culture, yep. generations of values that had built up, and a community that was destroyed mm. as a result of the storm. But the just response may also be, and certainly the resilient response may right. also be, let's not build in these places that are were marginal and that's exactly why african american communities were there disproportionately and so uh, we we have a tension there and i think as we're thinking about the future uh, and, and same with energy infrastructure, resilience is going to be an important, uh, it, it is going to be intention, as you say, with sometimes the just response. And we'll have to be really thoughtful about it and make sure that all uh, that are um, involved and affected by those decisions are, are at the table to help make this yeah, decision. interesting. Another tension point, and this will be, um, you know, at our Verge Oakland event, um, the, this, this tension between kind of growing the clean economy on the one hand and climate justice. Um, Talk a little bit about that, um, kind of continuing on what you just you just mentioned. Yeah, I mean, I think when we're thinking about a, a clean economy, um, it ought not to ha be decorated by issues of diversity inclusion, but actually be you know that needs to be inherent in all of the decision making processes from right at the beginning, whether or not you're dealing with you know uh, mechanisms like on bill financing to allow access to these clean energy um, opportunities for communities. Don't, 
mm-hmm. renters or others who don't have access to rooftops, for example, um, to where we site these uh, new facilities. Uh, even if it's clean energy, it's not necessarily supportive of a community if, uh, or a community agency if it's uh, clustered and accessible to large taking over areas where there may have been other community yep. benefits. So that, that's, I think, going to be critically important. Yeah, interesting. Well, Maxine, you mentioned uh, earlier on. I'm not an I'm not an energy specialist, but um, this dimension that you're covering, we think, is so important to expanding the clean energy, the clean economy. Um, and uh, it's as I mentioned, it's a theme um, at our next Verge event um, that will be front and center. So, wanted to thank you for joining us here today. My pleasure. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks.